Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. I have got a really cool product review for you on this particular video. Normally I don't usually start by kind of getting all excited about it because you know I'm also supposed to stay objective but this one is really really cool. Let me tell you about well let me tell you what it is to start. This is the Sense Whole House Energy Monitor and number one I want to thank Sense. They provided it for you know for testing and review purposes. They took care of the the bill for installing it. I'll get to that in a minute and the team has been great to work with. So what does this thing do? Uh, this is a, um, it's not just a thing that's going to act like another like electrical meter and just give you a, a readout of what you're using. No, this thing is actually going to be hooked into your electrical panel. There's a lot of information at sense.com. I'm not going to repeat it here. You can find out, but generally this is for a standard 120, 240 split system, uh, 200 amps maximum, but this is going to go in your panel. It's got two sensors for the two legs of power and it needs to go on a 240 volt um, breaker. Uh, so we can kind of understand everything. Please have someone qualified, install it. Don't do it yourself if you don't know what you're doing. Once you have this set up, you know, and electrically installed, connected, it's, you know, it makes a beep and it's all good to go. You'll connect it up to your phone. It'll figure it out via Bluetooth. You'll connect it to your Wi-Fi. And then, uh, you know, create the account, all that kind of standard, you know, cloud smart device kind of thing. By the way, there's no monthly fee to use this, just FYI. So once this is set up, it's going to start, you know, it'll run a self-test and then it'll start identifying the things on your power line that are, you know, being used in your home. It, you don't have to assign this to all different devices. You don't have to like hook it up to all the different breakers. It's a composite device. It's looking at the electrical signal and figuring this stuff out. Lots of math and science. So what it'll first start doing, it'll start popping up little notifications on your phone and saying, hey, we found a device. We found your vacuum, your fridge, your AC, your, your, your coffee maker and stuff like that. Because it's understanding the actual electrical signature that various devices use. And these are major power users, by the way. It's not gonna find things like LED light bulbs, uh, more on that in a little bit. Um, these are big power users, but it'll find things like coffee makers that use, you know, uh, that have a heating element. And so what they've done is, as they've gathered more and more data from the people using these uh, devices within the sense community the accuracy of their algorithms gets better and better over time so you're not buying a device that's like you know, preset and then it's never going to get better this is a, a really good investment for your home i don't know this would be uh, if this would be good for renters because again please get permission, please have someone install it. So I'm a renter, but I know the people uh, who live in the main house on the property because they're basically my best friends. And I have a unique situation here because the power comes into the panel that's sitting uh, right outside this particular building and it feeds their house. So I actually see all of the devices from across the property and my friends also have access to the app and we've tried to identify everything and kind of put them in different houses and all that stuff. Let me show you also, I think I've probably put up some uh, screenshots, but I'll show you in a real time manner if we just pick one of these devices. Let's just say heat pump. This is, I think, the one uh, uh, that's being used on the other side of the property. You can actually see this community names. So generally people have normally identified whatever this thing that it, it thinks is a heat pump they have um, identified as a heat pump. So it, the accuracy for the identification gets better and better. But again, lots of science and math behind it. I'm just gonna say keep it. I guess I never did that. Uh, and you can always go back to those options. But let's go back to the main screen. This is the tablet view. Um, the smartphone view is also great, uh, iOS and Android. Um, but you get a lot more information on the um, on the uh, tablet view all at once. You get kind of a real time uh, a little uh, activity on the right side and then you get all these circles always on other i've got a heat pump which i think is their heat pump sofa table lights sitting over there main space lights a couple lights on here we'll get to that in a second always on simply means you know whether it's vampire draw or just things that are just always on the computers usually are the big culprit there um, or any little things that are just plugged in and always using some little standby power. What are we at? We're at 547 watts. That's not too terrible across both properties. Um, other is a category where it couldn't necessarily identify what these things were, so it just lumped everything else that it couldn't identify into this category. Always on could be a device that it identified, but it lumped it into the category because it thinks that for most of the time every day, it's always on. So let's, let's do some real time stuff. This is the fun stuff. Normally I am in, uh, studio mode here. Everything is quiet, turned off. My fridge is off. The AC is off. Let's let's muck that up and go studio mode off. 
fridge and one, two, three, Nest thermostat, boom. And we see HVAC fan one, uh, the fridge turned on, there's the AC one. So what you'll see is down the road, um, initially it may find, hey, we found your air conditioner. But down the road it may say, hey, we also found your um, the individual fan, like the blower motor inside that air conditioner. So you actually wind up with two different devices. So the fan, using 964, about 960 watts. If I tap on the AC, using 1900 watts. And you see that if you were looking at the bottom number that was at about 1000 watts of total usage across both properties or both houses, is now at around 3000. If I go to the graph view up here, we can actually see that in real time that, whoa, it really, really went up in just you know a couple second time, because that's what I did. And you can see now, uh, the power went way up as the compressors kicked on and everything kicked on um, and now it actually starts coming down a little bit it's almost like a when they spin up an aircraft engine to get you you know into the air and they can bring it back once they level off so you can actually see how this works this is really it's a lot of fun data i could go through um, a lot of different pages and, and graphs and things like that on here this is something that you can have a lot of fun with i come from both the creative background and kind of a data and um, enterprise IT developer background. So for me, I love data. I love looking at these charts and seeing how things work. So this is really, I, I definitely can geek out to this. And if you do, this is the device for you. So um, I'm gonna go back to the bubble view and um, let's see. Let's go over to um, the device tab. I, I, I gave you the information on kind of like how it you know, uh, identifies it, but we can go in, uh, here's AC one. Okay. So we're on this 1960 Watts about of power for a minute and 45 seconds. It's been on, that's about accurate. We're in real time right now. And that's really helpful. And I'll get to that kind of in the long term thing, but identifying how long something has been on or how long it's been off can be really helpful down the road. I've plugged in just an average because I don't know the exact number that we're being billed. We're on kind of on a time of use plan, which is not yet supported by Sense. But you can plug in your average cost of electricity, like the cents per kilowatt hour. And you can see that, okay, estimated cost per year, because basically I've been running this, it has about three months of data. Started this in July, right in the, uh, the beginning, or in the, our middle of summer. Um, 229 bucks a year estimated at this point. So you start getting these data points and it really starts to be interesting. Percentage of monthly use about 17%. And I can see by the month, so this has been you know, a little bit you know, up and down different days um, in September. I can jump back to, uh, to August. August we had some we had some cooler days because we had some monsoon season. We had certain times where there was blackouts because of all the storms. So you see it was kind of up and down. And I can, I can do this by the week, I can do this by the day, and you can really, really dial this stuff in. And you can kind of export these reports as well and, and really have some fun with it. Total time, 18 hours, 57 minutes. Uh, that is um, this week, let's take a look this month. Six days, nine hours this month. Total time, like actually combined. Let's take a look at the microwave. Do I use the microwave all that much? 0.1% of my total energy use. Let's go here and look for the month. Yeah, 43 times on. Maybe I was making some coffee or in the popcorn or you know doing whatever. But um, you can. It's fun to look at this information. And uh, I want to note also that again, big energy users. The more energy is being used, the better for it to identify that energy signature and how it affects the power line. That's how they're doing that. That. Uh, uh, magic basically to do it. So smaller things like little LED light bulbs, tiny little appliances that don't have heating elements, tiny little motors, it may not pick those things up. It will pick up like vacuums and things like that. But little LED light bulbs, probably not going to be picked up. So an integration they've recently done is with Philips Hue. So if you connect this to your Philips Hue system, you'll be able to get some data. And if I jump up here, to my sofa table lights, which are sitting over there. You can see that they're at 55%. That's being reported by Hue. It's not trying to analyze the power line. It's saying, okay, we know how much um, energy these things take because it's a known value, the maximum power draw that a Philips Hue um, regular light bulb would take. And since they're at 55%, they're taking five watts. And that's actually for both of the lights that are sitting on the sofa table right over there. So. Um, I think they're going to probably do some more integrations like this, and this would be really great to make up for where they can't identify smaller power users on the power line um, through their identification process. 
So um, let's dive in a little bit further. I'm going to go back to my notes here to make sure that I'm not uh, kind of just rambling on. Uh, let's look at our the real time stuff is stuff is fun, but let's look at some trends. So. I made a goal because last month I was going to be gone, my friends were going to be gone, and again, we had some blackouts and stuff like that, so I wonder, I'd wondered, you know, can we stay maybe under a certain amount, and, and it had been estimating around 400 kilowatts per month. So I said, I'll make a goal of 400 kilowatts. So if I go now into usage, and I'm looking for the always on, can we make the always on you know 400 you know or less so I'm gonna to go to month there it is so for this month yeah we're, we're blowing past it if I go back to last month which was August I was at 390 so that was that was pretty good lowered things down um, always on kind of vampire draw was less they were gone I was gone I turned off some other things and we made it. So the long term, you probably might wonder, okay, it's cute to look at this. It's great to get the notifications. I can tap on these things and find it. But where's the real long term information and how does this help me? Where this helps is you have devices, you know, again, compressors, motors, heating elements and water heaters. All these things need maintenance over time where they could go out or they could cause floods or problems. So if you can kind of preemptively know when something is going to go out or have a problem you can fix it beforehand you can prevent disasters you can prevent uh, a lot of maintenance happening so what we can do I'm on AC1 let's go to something else that's turned on right now let's go to the fridge and I can create an alert here I can go to manage and uh, let's see doesn't all right yeah I turned notifications off on the on the iPad but anyways um, I can get basic alerts you know when it turns off when it turns on if, if, if something I'm looking to identify I need to know some additional information and by the way they have an integration with IFTTT so you can kind of link this up to other smart home systems based on things turning on and turning off it's kind of basic functionality for now but if you love IFTTT there's that but I can do a custom notification so what if the fridge or something else is running longer than it should be or it's turning on like more often than it should be. I can go in and say, all right, is this thing running for a certain amount of time? Is it on or is it off for a certain amount of time? Is there a weird trend that's starting to happen that without something like Sense, it would just be anecdotal. You would just think, well, I feel like the fridge is running more or I feel like the AC or I feel like the hot water is not as hot as it used to be. What's going on? Through these custom alerts and through the graphs and looking at this information, you can turn that anecdotal thinking into something that actually has real data behind it, thinking, you know what, maybe there is a problem with the fridge or the AC or the water heater. Let's have someone take a look at it or maybe let's just preemptively replace it before there is a real big problem. So that's the investment side. The Sense Energy Monitor is 299, so this is not a cheap device, but again, this has given you a lot of really good information. And uh, and if it can save you money, if it can actually save you on, on a major disaster or a problem with an appliance or some other thing down the road, it's gonna be helpful. The other thing is they are making constant improvements to it. They um, basically over spec the device when they launched it because they figured people aren't gonna buy a new one of these things like when they buy new phones, they gotta make it so that it can really read a ton of, and be very accurate for what's going on within your home and within you know the various electrical circuits so they can move and, and down the road they can identify things like electric car chargers computers so far uh, so far not so much like it hasn't identified my Mac or any of the computers um, that are in the other house but maybe down the road they will but again as you can see heat pumps and fans um, and uh, major energy users even coffee makers dryers uh, washers and so forth it's going to find these things and you can really dial things in you can really understand how much energy you're using not just at, at an entire um, entire number of things and, and let's go ahead and uh, put us back into studio mode off 
and we'll see that certain things um, are actually, I'm sorry, studio mode on. We'll bring the stuff down and you'll start seeing the energy kind of drop down a little bit. Oh, there are a couple things disappeared. So you get that real time effect. That's the fun stuff. But like I said, the data is really where it is. I want to say, say thanks again to Sense for uh, providing the unit and everything that they've been involved to make this review happen. And I do think, I really tend to think, this is a really cool device. It's going to get better over time. I did some comparisons, by the way, just to let you know, um, you know, looking at things like the fridge, what what is the fridge actually supposed to consume in terms of power at a maximum draw, and compared it to what it's actually showing here, because you wonder, okay, it identifies this stuff and it says what it's using, but is that really accurate? It's accurate within a number of watts, you know, 10 watts or so. Thanks again, Sense, for helping out with this review. And that is that. If you got any questions for me on this specific thing or something else, let me know in the comments or shoot me an email through the uh, smarterhomehelp.com address. And otherwise, I'm Jody Ganzik. Thanks for watching, as always, and I'll see you next time.